Can you hear me okay? You can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Hi, everybody in the YTPC. This is JD Silver, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Steve from Smoking Cardboard. So uh, he agreed to get together with me today. Actually, we had a bit of a... Uh, we planned to do it last weekend, and I slept through my alarm. Well, I didn't even set an alarm. Uh, I'm ashamed to admit. But I've got him today, and uh, I'm really glad to welcome you, Steve. So thanks for agreeing to chat with me. Yeah, I'm glad we could make it work. Yeah. So tell me what you're smoking. I'm smoking some Rattray's Hollow of the Wind in uh, a Mark Tinsky billiard that is a pretty pipe and you told me you commissioned that right yep yeah so this is uh, how, did, how did you go about like what's involved in commissioning well at the time i had just bought some other higher end factory made pipes uh and i thought i heard from um mike at briar blues talk about um, different man, you know, different, uh, guys who make pipes. And he mentioned, uh, Mark Tinsky as being a affordable pipe maker that makes really good work. So he was, you know, best buy sort of thing. Mm. And so I thought, well, if, if I'm already like paying about the same amount, I might as well get a custom made pipe or whatever from, you know, someone so I went to his website <clears throat> and I ended up not, I only smoke nine mils, nine millimeter filters. So that's kind of an issue with custom piping. Like mm -hmm. some guys don't make those types of pipes. So I emailed him and I was like, do you make, you know, nine millimeter pipes? Because all the pipes that I see available from you and other places are not nine millimeter pipes. And then he said, yeah. And <clears throat> then it was kind of, I didn't know. At the time, I didn't know what information to give him, you know, how specific or because I was still pretty newish a year, a little over a year into piping. And so I didn't even know necessarily what I really liked. So hmm. he helped me out, though. Was it you that did the video on things to to consider when commissioning a pipe? That was you, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a really yeah. interesting video. I really liked that. That was really good. And then somebody did a response to that, a pipe carver. Yeah. Who was that? Was yeah. that Jason? Simon. That was Simon. Oh, yeah. Right. London, uh, London Simon. London calling, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. I'm glad you did that. And so it, with that particular pipe, did you send him drawings or did you no. give him your favorite style of pipes? Or? So I basically just said I wanted a billiard and he said, oh, you know, what size? And I just said, I want to, to be able to clench the pipe. I don't know what size you don't that want is. You didn't want it so heavy that it was dropping down. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I just yeah. want to be able. And I said, I was going to smoke this pipe a lot. So I, I wanted it to be like, this was going to be a pipe that I'm going to be smoking, you know, mm -hmm. type thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, I thought at the time I wanted, you know, a little bit of a bend into it. So I think I told him that. And I think I knew the difference between um, a saddle bit and uh, a tapered stem. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I said I wanted that. But I was going to have it uh, rusticated instead of smooth. This one's, it's smooth. And he said when he was making it, hey, it looks really good. Do you want me to just leave it smooth? And so then I was like, okay, if it's not going to cost any more. And he's like, no, it's fine. So did you originally ask for rusticated because you thought then that they could use briar that was maybe less expensive or like, why did you? He had quoted me prices. Okay. For, diff you know, like, oh, it'd be about this much for this or this, that, and the other. So it was kind of like, okay, uh, since the rusticated is like a sandblasted pipe was uh, cheaper, that's what I'll get. I think it was, you know, maybe 30 bucks cheaper or something like that right because there's a chance uh -huh. there's imperfections in the briar or whatever right is that is that the reason right yeah you might have to um 
So different carvers, I think, do it differently. Mm. Um, because I think, I think the smartest way to do it is kind of like some of the carvers do it so that, well, if you want smooth, you have to go on the smooth list. And when they come along, that's when, when a good smooth pipe comes along, that's when I call you up. So I was making this pipe, you know, for someone else, but since it was a smooth, it's going to somebody else doing something else. Um, but obviously that's only if you make, you know, these are my shapes, you know, that you make, you know, uh, cause you'd have to just make, make them through. What I find really interesting about the whole smooth versus rusticated pipe, whether it's like carved out or sandblasted or whatever, what I find interesting is that a lot of people seem to prefer the more rusticated look to a pipe, even though pipe carver carvers seem to value the smoother pipe wood. Does that making sense? Or do you disagree with me there? No, I, I think that, I think there's rarity in a, a perfect smooth pipe. Right. But I also feel disappointed that there's not more room for an imperfect smooth pipe, mm. you know, like, oh, there's blemishes and all this stuff in the pipe. Um, I'm just curious why, like, that's kind of bad form, you know, Yeah. Like, rather so, than that's character in the pipe. I have a question for you since you have commissioned, did you say before five pipes so far? Uh, six and then one more because I gave a uh, pipe away. Mm. So I have a question for you. I don't, you know, just being like an amateur pipe maker like I am, I've shown, shown my brother-in-law a few times pipes I've made that have had like big imperfections or like knots in them that, I don't know if you've seen some of the pipes I made where it's got a big scar in it or whatever. And he, and he works, he's a contractor, but that he does uh, epoxy flooring. And he uh -huh. says, I have lots of epoxy like left over from jobs I could give you and you could mix up some nice blue to put in that crack like, you know, like the water tables have. Is that frowned upon with pipes or is that a problem with pipes? Does the heat cause that to fall out eventually or do you know anything about that? Well, I think, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. It's just whether or not it's going to burn out or not. And I think that takes a little bit of time and knowing. So, um it could be the sort of thing that you just, that's kind of your style. And if someone's pipe ever does burn out, you're just like, oh, I'll make you another one, you know, type thing. Mm, yeah. So it's like an inherent risk with that sort of style. But I think I have seen a couple of pipes where someone did do that, you mm. know, like they had like a blue resin inside the pipe or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, they, they finished it off like that. So I think that, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, doable, but I think having the experience of knowing how much briar and whether or not the issue is going all the way into the pipe yeah. is kind of uh, take some experience. To you don't want to be that. inhaling any burning epoxy resin. <laughs> that would not be cool, right? So you wouldn't want it to be a hole right through the bowl. It would have to be just an, a surface blemish or something, I think. Yes, yep. Your wife comes on your channel sometimes. You guys sit out in your coats behind your garage or something smoking. <laughs> so sometimes it, it's nice out. <laughs> yeah. Does she, what does she think about you being a pipe smoker? She doesn't seem to mind in the videos. Does she like the smell? She doesn't mind the smell. She does not like it. But if I try to smoke something like aromatic, she doesn't prefer that either. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, she likes the english smells the campfire best. or like yeah yeah i just remember the first time uh because most people complain you know talk about how their wives hate english blends like they're just you know pungent and stinky yeah uh, and so i was smoking a blend called glp's gaslight have you heard of that one it's I've very heard of it, but i've never tried it it's a plug with virginia's and there might be some freak in there but mostly Latakia mm. and it's very, you know, very strong smoke smell. <laughs> she came into the garage when I was sm smoking that and she was like, Oh, I like that one. What's that? I was You're just kidding. like, yeah. Oh, well, most people would say this is no go. No one's only pipe smokers are going to like the smell of this stuff. Mm. 
but she did. So it, it's always amazing when you, when your wife happens to really dig the things that you like. Like one of the reasons my my wife and I really like clicked was because she loves like action movies, sci-fi, like Star Trek and you know all this stuff that most girls roll their eyes at. And she's not really a big fan of like chick flicks and stuff. So it's like great. We go to a movie, we go watch James Bond or we go watch, you know, Lord of the Rings or whatever. She's all into that kind of stuff. So Yeah. Yeah, I think um like going back to the pipes, I don't think Chris, my wife, Krista really cares much about pipes. Like I've gotten her to try it sometimes and she's just like, uh, it's just smoke. Like it doesn't, there's no flavor for me, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's fine. You don't need to enjoy a pipe, but at the same time, it was nice for her to like, uh, be kind about and generous with her. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people that there's a lot of tension with starting, especially uh, pipes are kind of a controversial hobby, you know, mm. um, where it's not like exactly the sort of thing you'd put on a resume for a job, <laughs> you know, like you wouldn't want to talk about it at all. Cause it, you know, you don't know how anybody would react. Uh, so I think there's a lot of couples out there that have, you know, different parties that feel differently about, that whole hobby and they have yeah. stress uh, because someone's upset that they're doing this, you know, nasty habit or yeah. whatever. So it's nice to, uh, for that, but yeah, there's a lot of things that movies is one of the things, I don't know. My wife likes more movies than I do, I think, but we like some of the same movies. So that's yeah. nice. Yeah. She'll watch a war movie with me. <laughs> awesome. So what about uh, like at church and stuff? Do you ever have, is that an issue at your church that you smoke a pipe? Or? No. Mm -mm. People but, know, I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, I've shared some pipes with guys from church. Um, but at the same time, it is kind of like, uh, I don't know. I, I thought about um, like there's some guys I just recently, we had like a Bible study and at the end of our study uh, series, we uh, tried to celebrate with each other and do something fun. And so I had heard through the study that a number of guys smoked cigars and one guy smoked a pipe. So I was like, well, why don't we play a board game and then smoke pipes or cigars, whatever people want. Cool. And I was like, yeah, it was fun and the guys liked it. But at the same time, I don't think I could put that in like the church bulletin. Like, hey, let's do some <laughs> pipe time yeah. for uh, any guys or girls that are interested in a cigar or pipe. And uh, this is when we're going to do it. I, I don't I don't think the church would, you know, want that. Like that. <laughs> I had the same kind of thing happen with, with me when I... Uh... Uh, I've been in ministry, like paid ministry in churches since college as a music director. And uh, what the the church in a city near here called Hamilton, Ontario, uh, when I left that church, I just, jo Joanne, my wife, just said, that's enough of churches. It's enough of, you know, when you lose your job, you also lose your small group and your friend's base and and uh, your church and, you know, just the routine. It's You pick up and pull out and now you're in a new city with new people to get to know and new church to go to new speaker there to get used to new leadership you know the whole the whole nine yards mm -hmm. that's enough you got to find something else to do and uh, i kind of agreed with her i was kind of burnt out we ended up moving back to my hometown and in a local anglican church oh, what do they call anglican in the states uh it doesn't really matter episcopal I think. anyway oh episcopal. okay yeah episcopal. um so anyway uh they asked me if i'd start a service a contemporary service on Saturday nights and they don't have the same hangups with smoking and drinking. And so I could kind of come out of the closet a little bit about that. And we started, that's when we started up our Holy Smokers there. Well, mm -hmm. um, eventually I moved to the church I grew up in and I told them at the interview when they were hiring me, I said, look, I smoke a pipe. I had a glass of whiskey before I came over tonight. So, I mean, this is a free Methodist church. That's kind of 
you know, a little, it's, they tend to be a little bit more legalistic than some. And so I said, if that's going to be a problem, then I've, obviously I'm not suited for the job. And uh, they said, no, no, that shouldn't be a problem. But, you know, that's not good for you and stuff. Well, that was all very fine and well until, you know, the Holy Smokers men's group at the church got bigger and bigger. And, and they're finding out that I was inviting guys to it. And uh, they don't know about that, you know. So they asked me to stop inviting people to the Holy Smokers at our church. Mm. So it wasn't really a big deal because then all the other guys just took over the job of inviting. <laughs> sure. But, uh, you know, th that bothers me a little bit because there weren't there weren't really any other men's groups at our church that were effective that guys went to. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl parties maybe and stuff, but that kind of a thing. But a lot of the guys that smoke a pipe don't seem to be the same guys that dig sports. And, you know, so there's just that little bit of a disconnect sometimes. So. Our group is pretty strong and we have a lot of guys that are just in the community me some of them aren't even christians they just like to come because the conversation is interesting and you know that kind of stuff so i think it's it's an important reach outreach to these guys and a way for us as men to feel like we have a place separate from where you know it's not that we would say women can't come but women don't want to be there and so it's yeah. a real nice it's a real nice thing so you think yeah that's cool do you think that uh, that that wouldn't fly so much in your church? I think I could invite people and create events. I just don't think I would stand at the pulpit and announcement and say this. Right, is what right. We're do. <laughs> what is I your what is your denomination? What kind of church do you go to? Uh, the den denomination I go to is uh, Evangelical Free. Oh yeah, church. I've heard that. I don't really know anything about it. It doesn't but... mean free of evangelicals. <laughs> 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 it means. <laughs> <laughs> we've had uh some people show up before i don't know my dad's a pastor so oh, is i'm uh yeah i'm a pastor's kid ek so yeah did you go through the so, rebellion no 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 that was not not needed i guess <laughs> um but yeah i i the free and evangelical free church is free for the church to govern themselves. Mm. So we're, we're part of a den denomination, but we're, we pick our own pastor and, you know, hire our own pastor and oh, I see. all our stuff. Yeah. That's interesting. We're right in the process right now. Our church has been without a pastor for about a year. And we have an interim pastor, but it's, uh, it's not ideal when you're missing that leadership. It's, frustrating and there's just not any guys applying yeah yeah it can be uh tough trying to find yeah those replacements uh especially good fits you know like you can find a bunch of applicants and then none of these are kind of what we're looking for yeah i think that's essentially what we're going through i we're going to be doing that too because our pastor is past retiring age but he hasn't think he's we're just we're a young church he's he started us uh he started this b before i moved to this community but it, we're only like a 15 16 year old church mm. so we're finally in the process of moving into an a building did so you we build it or did you buy one uh yeah we're buying a church is a different church is building that they're scaling down. Oh. So that would be pretty big to just have finally a place of our own instead of being the whole mobile church thing. Have you been in church in uh, schools or in people's homes or what have you been doing? Uh, we've done a lot of the gamut. Most recently we're in the uh, children's theater of the community. Oh, neat. So but it's an old building and not for a church. So it's kind yeah. of obnoxious. <laughs> it, be, can, it can be hard when you're trying to do nursery and there isn't really a place for that or kids classes or it, is that kind of the thing you're facing at the theater? Yeah. It's yeah. not kid friendly or safe. You know, I mean, not that it's like <laughs> super, but they building sets and doing stuff. So there's, you know, stuff around and right. It's just not very inviting. Right. 
for other people, but it's all right. We still still being part of a community. Yeah. So switch gears a little bit. Have you ever been up to Canada? Yes, a couple times. Uh, once was when I we went over by New York. So it was um, the falls went across real quick and came back. Um, and then, uh, another time I went up north of Minnesota going fishing. Oh, nice. Would that be Manitoba or Saskatchewan? Mm, not sure. I think uh -huh. maybe Saskatchewan, but yeah, my wife's from Saskatchewan. It's about, I think about 2,200 kilometers from here. However far that is in miles, I'm not sure. And uh, but sometimes her father-in-law will take me way up north, you know, three or four hour drive from where they live, and it's just native people that live up there and yeah. all lakes. The whole the whole province is prairies except for way up north, and then um, up there they got some trees and rocks and lakes. It's pretty it's pretty beautiful up there. Yeah, I can't remember how far we drove in from the border. Do you remember um, if it was treed? It was like quite forested? Yeah, yeah it was. So it might have been even, even northern Ontario. I'm not just sure what is north of... You said north of where? Minnesota? Yeah. It could be Manitoba or Saskatchewan, I think. Must have been pretty far north. That was fun. We had like guided fishing where we did walleye. You just... And then... Uh, we had it so they would make the shore lunch for us, you know. I love shore lunch. You just oh eat catch and yeah, you just do fish that. It tastes I mean, so much know. better when it's just caught. I mean, I like fish anyway, but it when it's fresh like that. Oh, yeah. Do you do a lot of fishing? No, not at all. <laughs> Me neither. I'm, uh, yeah, not a, not a fisherman. Uh, my dad never did that for me. There was like a, a boys pond they called it in our town so it was a little pond that only kids like you had to be uh 16 or under to fish at the pond but they stocked it oh cool you know so it's just full of fish and i would try to catch you know uh catfish and bluegill and yeah all this stuff and i i didn't know what i was doing but there was so many fish that was easy enough to catch them on anything you know that's cool so, but it's bigger around here uh in wisconsin uh i just i don't know i have other hobbies i guess to yeah. me it's that's an all-day thing it's it's hard for me to waste the whole day fishing <laughs> well, you probably don't golf either no yeah I'm not uh, a golfer. i hate I've, golf. I've done it and especially through high school my, my family had like a membership to a golf place so you could just golf for basically free once you have a membership oh, yeah. um but i was never good and now it's just frustrating to just golf like twice a year because it's just like well i'm bad but i'm not going to get any better by only golfing twice a year <laughs> so it's kind of like yeah i can golf that's fine but someday maybe i could see doing that as like a good way to stay active and Did they let you smoke pipes on a golf course because if they did then i might be more interested i would think so um i think smoking cigars and golfing is pretty common okay so i don't know how that'd be any different than a pipe it seems like everywhere around here anyway now smoking is prohibited so annoying you can't even have yeah. like an indoor smoke shop yeah, I think I think you would be able to. It might be like, you know, tournament play not allowed. You know, right. or yeah. you know, when you're golfing with other parties or something like that, maybe. But I don't think so. I I don't know. Yeah. I guess part of that is always forming a relationship with the people that care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. When can I do this? <laughs> so, what are your other hobbies? Well. Um, I'm really into, um, a couple of different things. So I try to stay active. That's not in a gym cause that is not fun for me. So biking, 
uh, cause I can't really run as much anymore, but when I do run, I play ultimate Frisbee. Oh, fine. Um, and so there's like community leagues that do that. And then, um, I'm really into board games. That's, that's really kind of my consumes a lot of time at times, or I like to spend a lot of time playing board games. <laughs> like what kind of a board game do you like? Settlers of uh, Catan and stuff like that, or? Yeah, more modern. I'd say that was kind of like the game that got me into board games. That was back in 2003, probably. Okay. Yeah, and I've kind of grown a lot from that. So now, yeah, I, I've i kind of found games that like excite me more than others. Kind of like pipe tobacco, you know, when you're first trying pipe tobacco, Everything's so interesting and whatever. But then you kind of settle in on, oh, these are my favorites. So that's kind of the way I am with uh, board games. So I've uh, settled in on harder, more complex games. You know, I like games that take at least an hour and a half to play or two hours to play just because of the complexity and kind of, I always say the, the game arc. So like, uh, you know, the trajectory of the game, can it change okay. or is the game too short that the trajectory is like how, you know, you're 30 minutes into the game. Uh, someone's running away with it. There's nothing I can do to change that wow. because their strategy ended up paying out better than mine this time. So it's kind of like, well, that's all right. The game's going to be over in 20 minutes and game's over. You know, you can play again. For me, it's kind of like, oh, I, I really like being able to be tactical where I can make in-game decisions that can change the directory of the game. And it kind of needs to be a longer game to see that happen. It's kind of like the difference between watching a 30-minute TV show and an hour, right? you know, where it's like, oh, well, in a 30-minute show, you pretty much know how it's going to end every single time. But it's still fun knowing, you know, seeing it play out. Um, whichever type of show you like. But with the hour one, sometimes there can be some pretty big twists and, oh, I don't know what's going to happen in this episode because, you know, they're yeah. closer to movies or whatever. So that's kind I of I would love opinion. to know what these board games are because they sound amazing. Well, I have hun over a hundred of them. <laughs> All right. How long till I can be there? Let's see if I leave right now. <laughs> yeah i don't know there's it's a little crazy because the board game world thousands of games come out every year uh, and then not very many of them are necessarily the more complex you know you're pretty narrowed um but it it really varies because some games are more like oh i'm playing my own thing there's not as much interaction um, um and then others are like completely total interaction you know wow. like uh, uh the game people would know is like risk you know like what people do is the whole game so if everyone just gangs up on one player yeah they're gonna get beat up and yeah lose. <laughs> i used to love risk back in high school like in the 80s or something but i haven't really played it since then is that still a game you play? No. Mm -mm. Not that I wouldn't. It's just... Uh, it doesn't have a trajectory like you're saying. It's it's just like that's all there is to it, right? Mm, I Are think you? there is, but you're so dependent on uh, the dice that... that mm -hmm. Like you can play your best game and still not end up on top. Mm. And that's kind of not rewarding it doesn't uh too much like people yeah people want uh to be in control of their decisions that they make or generally other people like randomness because they might not be as skilled of a player so that gives them a chance you know right. i feel like i have a chance in this game so like um so it kind of depends uh where uh who likes what but generally speaking i like pretty limited randomness i i don't i don't want to roll a die and let it tell me if i'm gonna win or not right um so 
one of my favorite games is uh, an older game. I say it's my favorite just because it's longevity, uh, not necessarily because I play it all the time. Mm. <laughs> it's called Agricola. Mm. And you're uh, a farming family in the back in the right after the the Black Plague, the Dark Ages. Okay. And you're trying to learn how to eat a more balanced diet by farming animals and vegetables. And so you're kind of just building up this farm of of this. But it's it's challenging because you're trying to grow your family, make a bigger family. Uh, but as your family grows, you can do more, but you also have to like feed uh-huh. the family, which is uh, a challenging aspect of the game. Um, but then you get these cards that you can start the game with and build strategy off of that give you different occupations that your people can take on and uh, different uh, tools and systems that they can use to improve their farm. And uh, that's kind of all. There's so many cards and you play with just a few of them that every game just feels like new and the strategy. So you can build off, build off these cards. Is, is Are you competing with other, like, is it com- competition with other players or cooperative or? No, it's competitive and it's uh, called worker placement because your people, your man and wife that start the farm, go out and take action. So I can go over to the wood pile and get wood or I can go to the fishing pond and get some food or uh, get some reed uh, or, or do some different actions. Um, and once I've taken that action, no one else can that round. So there is very much a competitive, like, Oh man, uh, do I go here? Or is, you know, Susan going to go there or, you know, Frank, they need that. So maybe if I go here now, so there's a lot of, Mm. and then, and then the spaces get, uh, some of the spaces get better if no one takes them. So, oh, there's three wood there, but if no one takes it, we add three more wood the next round. So now there's six wood. So mm-hmm. now it's an even better spot. So it's like that whole tactical thing where, oh man, I had a plan, but these spaces are all too good to pass up that yeah. I kind of have to abandon my plan and do something else because this is a better opportunity. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, geeking out about board games. But. I love it. I mean, I love it. That's what I want these uh, chats to be like, you know, really get to know some of the other guys beyond just, well, today I'm smoking smoking such and such and such and such a pipe or, you know, it's a little bit one dimensional after a while, but I love the idea of creating community with some of these other pipe smokers, you know, and getting to know you guys. I'm, I'm amazed at how nice and how uh, friendly, warm, accepting, embracing inclusive all the guys in the ytpc are it's really cool it's such a yeah great i i've really enjoyed getting to know so many of all the guys it's like i was just explaining i think in my last video uh it's always awkward trying to explain that to people outside of it is <laughs> the youtube community where it's like oh yeah i put up with it you know they're like oh what are you doing this weekend well i'm probably going to talk to my online friends <laughs> and they're like what your <laughs> online friends you know don't you have online friends that you uh yeah, socialize and video chat with no <laughs> that's so true that's hilarious i find it really challenging to keep up with all the various people i'm curious about like I keep finding these new pipe smokers in the YTPC and I'll subscribe to their channel. And then I'll watch a few of them and I'm like, oh, I, I think I really like what this guy has to say. And I'll watch a few of his videos. But then, you know, Ethan Parsimonious Piper will be posting a couple. I'm like, oh, I should watch his because I like what he has to say. Or um, L- Let My Cameron Go. Is that right? Something like mm-hmm. that. Nathan, yeah. Nathan, I try to join in on his prayer meetings. And I'm like, I can't do it all. And so... And then there's all the video responses. You know, I just someone's just reached 2,000 subs, and uh, Kevin Hobbiton Piper is doing that right now. And uh, so just trying to be involved with everybody, it's impossible. Because it is. Uh, before I joined that group, I was loving YouTube for lots of other reasons. I like to watch. Um, uh, what's the name of the thing? Uh, it's out of Britain. It's an old show that was in the 90s. And they do archaeology. What are they called again? And I, I love watching those. Joanne will say when we're going to bed, she said, aren't you going to watch some of 
whatever it's called. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, honey, or, you know, watching what's going on in, U- in Ukraine. Or uh, there's a guy called uh, Sean Woods, Mouse Trap Monday, and he's posting new videos of new. Mo- he's a mouse trap collector, and uh, I had a busy social life on <laughs> YouTube before I ever met the YTPC. It's like, what now? <laughs> Plus my other two YouTube channels, which I'm trying to post videos for, and you know I, I'm not making enough money to really do it full time. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a good problem to have. At least I'm not bored. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think I see a lot of people kind of dive into the YTPC and then get burnt out, like you said. Like they try too much, and then they realize that it's kind of like playing havoc with like their regular life, and so yeah. then they're like pulling back out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why generally, um, it, it's surprising how much turnover there is with the videos. Like, there's only a couple guys that have been making you know videos consistently on whatever's consistent for them for like two years. In the last two years, like that's you know, so it, there is this element of well, there's always got to be new people jumping in. And you never know who they are and who's, you know, interesting character is going to pop up. Uh, but at the same time, it's the same with people who watch and comment, even like on my videos. Now, some of them have stuck around and, you know, I've seen these people comment since I was started. Wow. But there's a lot of other people that are brand, you know, newer or whatever that comment on my videos. And then they'll come and go and you know, I think that's, I think it's really important to find balance. So whatever balance is for the, that people and uh, just not feel bad about it. You know, there's so right. many people that feel bad. And so then they'll leave the whole YTPC together because they feel bad that they can't participate in mm. the level that they want to. And it's like, well, don't make any VRs. Don't, you know, choose which videos you want to watch. You know, yeah. that's you just one good. person. Sure. I think especially I feel guilty when there's certain guys that comment on every video I put out. And I'm thinking, well, if they're looking at every video I put out, then I should probably be watching every video they put out. Just, it's just a kind thing to do. It's not that I don't want to, but it's a question of time. So. Yeah. I don't, I think, yeah, I think there's got to be less feeling sorry about that sort of stuff. Yeah. Do, do what's right for you and. <laughs> that's a great and just appreciate the people that are you know yeah leave them a comment back and tell them how much you do appreciate that yeah. they commented on your video and you know when you do have a moment and you know watch your video and leave a comment too yeah how many subscribers are you at right now oh i i don't know i think it's somewhere around 750 so you're coming up on a thousand whole new world will open up uh, no, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll get new features. You'll be right. Uh, there, there'll be new features in YouTube available to you, which yes. is kind of cool. Like I really miss that my channel doesn't have the community tab. My other channels do. Well, my one other channel does, and I use that to let people know that things are coming up or whatever. But now, if I want to let know people know things are coming up, then I have to post a little video, and that's another thing for people to watch it's not as easy to scroll and like okay yeah that's good to know that you're coming up with that video you know what i mean but can't you do the shorts yeah and i have been using shorts for that yeah because that's kind of where that seems to come in and yeah. for a while i wouldn't watch any of those when those became available yeah i don't like watching. i add all the videos i want to watch to a playlist yeah and then i watch them out of that and i couldn't add those so it's just like yeah, I can't watch that because I can't add it to my list and I'm not watching videos right now. I'm just adding videos. So I don't have now, time to You still those. can't, can you? You still can't put shorts in a playlist or can you now? Yeah, you can. Okay. I add it to my... There was something that happened to me the other day. I put a short in my playlist. Oh, and I was watching on my TV because I have Chromecasts, a few Chromecasts in the house. Mm-hmm. So I tried to add it to my playlist on the TV and it said, if you do that, your playlist will stop playing on the TV and start playing on your phone. Oh, maybe. So... Yeah, and I was just like, okay, then never mind. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I didn't watch the sh- short then. Where are we at? We're at. Wow, we're already at forty-three minutes. Yeah, that went pretty fast. <laughs> it always flies. I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a five-minute video. Um, just, just because I don't have anything prepared to talk about, and then it'll be like, oh, I get to talking, and now it's 
17 minutes in and I think I've just talked for seven. Yeah. <laughs> what I've been doing, I don't know, for good or for bad, is I'll record a video like on my drive into the studio or something. And the video will be like 15 minutes long. But then I go back home and I just cut mercilessly. And I'll watch it again and like, yeah, I sound like an ass saying that. I'll cut that. Uh, they don't care about that. I cut that until it's like a four minute video. I'm like, okay, or six minute video. They'll watch that. You know, I try to keep it interesting and to the point. But then there are some video guys. Uh, what's his name? Johnny uh, the Onion, where he just sits there and not, <laughs> not saying anything, and yet they're so interesting to watch. You know? Yeah, I think it's your own your own thing. I'm kind of like that. You know, I I, I think I wanted to have meaningful content. You know, initially, yeah. you I just wanted to do. I I was more towards drawn towards creating something of quality rather than just something and i think it's funny because i never achieved that like initially it was like oh my goodness quality content is really hard to make like you have to be very intentional and um it just takes a lot of effort you know with the editing and all of this sort of stuff and so yeah. pretty soon it was like oh i'm here for I guess uh, I guess it's more like my video was would be more considered like a vlog, you know. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just talking, and uh, you know, it's unedited. It's not super prepared. <laughs> it's not high quality, but at the same time, it's it's kind of you know works, you know. So I think it's different people do different thing, you know, uh, and whichever you know, makes you feel better or happy. But I've gotten, I guess I've gotten past the part of feeling bad, that whole coming back to feeling bad. I don't I feel bad somewhere so much anymore. If, uh, right. if uh, nobody watches my video or if it's too long, so people skip it and don't watch it. It's just kind of like, yeah, but there was five guys that loved that video. Right. And as long as, you know, I'm able to connect with the people that enjoy that type of content, that's who I'm trying to connect with. So, yeah. Um, but I'm thankful for the other people that make shorter videos, too. <laughs> yeah. I tend to when I'm picking the videos I want to watch, I usually am thinking I want to watch more videos than I do less, like less. And so I'll pick videos that are under 10 minutes to watch and I'll have, pick, you know, eight or 10, 10 minute videos to watch. And maybe, maybe if they're kind of slower talking guys, I'll put it on a faster speed or whatever. And, but then that's, again, that mindset of I, I'm so goal oriented. I'm kind of a high achiever in that respect. And, and because I've got this other channel where I've gone through this whole building community experience already, I'm thinking about the ways to make my channel get to the point where there is real, maybe even profit from it, you know? I don't know whether that's too mercenary. Like, I always struggle with that. Because if you're doing that, then how authentic are you really? You know, if you're just thinking yeah. about profiting, there are some channels that I watch where it's almost, I feel a little embarrassed for them because they're they're asking for patrons and they're kind of pushing support I don't know. Yeah, I think cool. the YTVC is in a great environment to try to make money off of. Yeah, I agree. Uh, one, because it's about tobacco, so they won't let you advertise a lot of that stuff. So, you you know, it would have to be the sort of thing of Patreon. But then right. at that point, you have to be providing someone with quality content, which I already explained is really just tough. Tough. Yeah. You know, and I think there are some people who who manage to do that, like stuff and things, you know, like he has people that pay them monthly just to keep his channel going. You know, yeah, right. um, I think that uh, as much as people make fun of Mutton Chop Piper for, I don't know, some of the different ways that he's tried to, like, garner some support. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that want to support him. You know, they really enjoy his channel and stuff. Yeah. But those people are like well established and they they put uh they put a lot of effort to getting to where they were 
Right. And I don't know if they initially started with the mindset, like you said, where it's like, well, all of this is to build a, a channel or it was kind of like, well, it just kind of took off and it's popular. And I right. seem to resonate and I can do more if you guys help me do more, you know, more from the mentality of giving back rather than like, you know, benefiting from your popularity. Right. Yeah. I certainly have zero ambitions to ever, like, I think my goal would be the opposite is how can I give, make sure that I never take more than I receive from this community. Um, That's kind of more my goal. That's why if if I give people stuff, you know, this is not a trade. You don't need to give me anything back unless we talked about actually specifics of trading. This is me giving it to you. And the reason why I want to do it is because I care about you and this, you know, experience that we're having. And, uh, I, you know, I, maybe I have a particular tobacco that you mentioned and I had it and I'm sharing, Mm -hmm. but there's no, like, I don't know. There's just a joy that comes with, uh, caring for one another in a manner that, uh, is, uh, What's it? A sacrifice, you know. There's mm. a there's a joy that comes with, you know, being a giver, not a that, taker. Yeah, just sacrificing so that someone else can, you know, feel cared for or mm. or whatever. You know, I, I those sound really formal words for, hey, I sent someone a package, or even I just sent someone a comment, and I don't really care if they watch my video or, <laughs> or not. Yeah. Uh, it's just something as simple as that, but I don't know. It's, it's uh rewarding, especially when you meet these people in person, like went to that pipe show and it's like, Oh man, I wish I could spend so much time talking to them more. You know, it's weird to have all these friends that uh, you've never met, but you're, you know, your friends, you know, like you can just chill. Like we are now, you know, we're yeah. just sharing pipe together. Yeah. I have no idea what this pipe is. It's probably. What are you smoking? I don't know if I remember or heard. I didn't say. It looks like it's just a basket pipe. It says. Oh, uh, it's like there is a stamp on there, but it's so faded I can't really tell what it is. And then it says X hyphen T R A extra hyphen six four three, probably. Um, Vintage pipe nightmares, vintage pipes nightmares. If no, because he seems to know every pipe that comes out. And I think that shape is a uh, a Dublin. It's an old pipe. I found it at a flea market or something. And I always smoke the same tobacco pretty much. I I was smoking rum cured, which I don't love, but it's okay. By Smokers Pride, my favorite. This is getting kind of low, so I'm gonna buy another bag. Is uh, Black Cavendish. I did, whoever makes Black Cavendish, I almost always like it. This is also by Smoker's Pride. About 10 years ago or so, I stumbled upon Smoker's Pride Black Cavendish because I was looking for Black Cavendish tobacco. My dad smokes Black Cavendish tobacco, and he said to me one day, yeah, I decided I really like Black Cavendish, and I, and I didn't really have an opinion at that point. And I'm like, okay, okay, and I had some of his, and I'm like, yeah, I do like that. And so that just became my go-to. I started searching for Black Cavendish, and when I found Smoker's Pride, it was like $11 for a bag like this mm-hmm. big. That was 11 Canadian, so what's that, like $2.99 American? <laughs> Not really, but then I was like, all right, that's the tobacco for me. Now it's about $46 a bag in Canada, but uh, on the on the Indian Reserve. But uh, I'll pick up a bag that'll last me for a year or so. Have you explored other tobaccos much at all? Well, I've been smoking for about 30 years, so before... Black Cavendish, yeah, I tried different stuff. And I had a friend, uh, Giuseppe Galliano was his name. He was a young guy, about 24 or something. He came to our church as as a priest when I was at the Anglican church, the Episcopal style church. And uh, he was a pipe smoker. He and, he and I were the ones that really started the Holy Smokers group. Mm-hmm. And uh, he loved Presbyterian or uh, Three Nuns. or He had a collection of all religious type of <laughs> if it was a religious theme, and he had he had about twenty different kinds of tins, all different religious themes. So, uh, so I've, I've tried some of those. <laughs> Presbyterian was good. Um, 
And I like Three Nuns. I guess they used to have Perique in it, and they don't do that anymore. So he would buy Perique separately and mix it in. That was C.S. Lewis's favorite tobacco. So he'd put some Perique in his Three Nuns and smoke that. We tried smoking straight Perique together, but that was pretty pungent. Have you ever hmm. tried that? I haven't. I'm kind of Perique sensitive. Yeah. Not, I, have, I like blends that have Perique. Um, like one of my favorites has has it but at the same time i just get irritated i get mouth irritation or easily and i find that blends that have too much preek really irritate so so what's the latest with your whole mouth thing or whatever like you had to stop smoking for a while yeah so i thought are uh, trying to figure out like what the irritation is so i i went to a doctor like last year and I didn't feel like I had very helpful advice. So then my dentist and um, regular doctor were like, oh, I think you should keep pursuing this with a different doctor. Mm. And so what he initially analyzed it to be was, um, I think, different than what it ended up being. So essentially I have um, probably, I haven't like, paid the bazillion dollars in the US that you need to pay to like officially know what anything is. You get all the tests. But uh, I, I have an autoimmune disease that, mm. so it's my immune system that's kind of activated by the irritation and it kind of creates that. So I think, I think I, I'm trying to figure out what I can do and what I can't do. And uh, I take like a, a uh, anti-inflammatory uh, steroid okay. that helps calm like all of that stuff down. And I didn't realize I could take it more frequently than what I was. So, and you, you uh, put that like an oral steroid, like you rub it on your mouth, or mm -hmm. yeah, 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 some stuff like that. So. We'll see. I mean, you could try taking medication to turn your immune system down, but that has its consequences, own problems, mm -hmm. you know, like obviously your immune system's there for a reason. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I've not even looked into any of that, but I'm a little bit less concerned than I was initially. And I guess I have to figure out what's appropriate, you know, just well, when I first that. heard, I was like, oh, no, I really like watching his channel. He's not going <laughs> to be smoking anymore. What? Yeah, at first. Then, like, a little while stop. later, you posted another video, and I'm like, okay, great. He's back. So. Yeah, I felt like, yeah, that was, it was a hard feeling to feel like, oh, man, I'm best with all these friends through this medium. Yeah. And then feeling like you had to, like, lose it all was pretty bad feeling so that's kind of interesting like in the sense of um everyone consciously or unconsciously decides to disengage you know right and it was kind of interesting being forced to like have to disengage uh and it wasn't a great feeling <laughs> no i bet how often do you smoke do you smoke every day or i would say right now i'm like most days but just once mm -hmm. you know um but that's part of this trying thing it might have to be less frequent than this yeah. uh we'll see i think what i might do is more in the winter lay off it more, that's what i do you know when it's cold here and kind of crummy i hate smoking outside so when it's winter i don't smoke but We'll I see. should say I hate smoking outside in the winter. I love smoking outside, just not when it's freezing cold. Well, yeah, I think it's real cold. I have a garage with a heater in it, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I would mostly. But then, I don't know, my wife was like, well, why don't you just smoke inside or whatever? I don't know. I was always talking about making this little nook in our bedroom, and she made it happen. And that's I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll give this a whirl. That's awesome. and, uh, <laughs> Did she get an air purifier or anything, or does your bedroom just always smell like tobacco? I have, I had one before, 
um, because I wanted to, I can't remember exactly why, um, I got it. I don't know if I was going to put it in the garage or something either way. So yeah, I have an air purifier. I only run it pretty much when I'm smoking and then like a little bit after it. Mm -hmm. Um, but really it, uh, the next day it's kind of mostly gone. Like it doesn't, it doesn't stick around. Now, if you like smoke all the time, it would be really hard to yeah make it go away or whatever but it's not really very obnoxious but it definitely smells like smoke like that evening yeah after I smoked but the next day you come back in the room and it's kind of not so big a deal but i really like smoking outside when it actually is nice enough to do that my wife's asthma is triggered by smoke so I, that's why I'll never be able to smoke in the house. Yeah, I have asthma too, but mine is like athletic induced mm. asthma. And that's, it's kind of like a secret killer. Not like I'm deathly, you know, like it could kill me. It's just more like, I only know it's there because sometimes it's not. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can exercise today and man, the the inhalers really help today, you know, yeah, but I always yeah, felt yeah. like it was always an ex I was always blaming it on my asthma when in reality I was just out of shape, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they have to work together. Like if I only take one or the mm -hmm. other, mm -hmm. I don't find any benefit. They, I kind of like, like one is kind of like sets up the other one to work. <laughs> And I don't think that's normal for everybody, but doctors are always pretty helpless at yeah. uh, helping you with asthma. It's kind of like, well, how are you doing? Do you want to try something else? Is this working for you? Like, there's it's never like, oh, this is what I suggest. Like, if you, a specialist looked at it, they'd probably be able to pinpoint it more, you know? Yeah, and that might be worth it at some point. The downside to the ones that I use, like, so I use both of these is after I exercise the next day, I'm just like coughing mucus. Like, yeah. it's always like, uh, I feel it's not like I feel bad or whatever, but I just sound <laughs> bad because I'm yeah. just like, <laughs> just coughing away. And my doctor is always like, yeah, this, this is not a side effect to these. And it's like, well, for me it is, but <laughs> I don't really care because it, it helps me breathe when I'm doing these activities. So right. I guess it's just a side effect I have to live with. Yeah. And so now I, they're like one, you're supposed to use these every day. And I only do it the days that I work out because of that. And I still find that works pretty good. So, cool. so before we wrap up, what, what would be one thing that you'd want to tell the YTPC community? Mm. I always hear different people answer this, you know, I think, uh, like you were mentioning parsimonious Piper, he interviews these new guys. Yeah. And he asked that question, you know, what's one thing you want to leave with uh, everyone? Uh, I really like watching his, his interviews. I do too. Uh, uh, yeah. Stop being sorry for not mm. doing more in the YTPC. Uh, stop being sorry when you realize you need to do less, you know, like, uh, just, uh, be content with what you can do and make wise choices for you and your family first, you know, uh, and then whatever you can partake in that's, and just recognize that some people can devote way more time to this than you. And that doesn't make them uh, better. You, you know, you might want to model yourself after that one because you respect them so much, but you know, other people uh, that's not going to work for them and they might respect you for having discipline. <laughs> so I don't know. That would be my thing. Stop yeah. being so sorry. That's awesome. <laughs> I love, I love that. That is a great takeaway. And I need to take that to heart. It's exactly right. Do what you can do. Put things first that should be first in your life, right? Yeah. And, and it happens with, you know, me too. You know, there's some times where it's like, man, 
I hate missing out, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Especially like weeks of vacation. You think, oh, that's when I could watch most videos. And it's like, no. And so like I'll scrap like a whole week and it's just like, well, oh, well, whatever happened that week in the YTBC, I'm not going to know. Yeah. <laughs> and just keep going. Uh, but there's probably other times where you need to do a better job of that. Of just being like, all right, I just got to skip a couple a week or a couple days because I'm, I'm more digital, diligent, but I, I, I use it as background, uh, like listening. Um, and it's nice because it's not something that requires a lot of attention all the time. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the people are, are just talking conversationally. So if I miss some bits of the conversation, I can, it's not like a, I'm learning. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, I'm, it was great. I hope yeah. that uh, you get a lot of other guys to chat with because I like watching them too.